After a devastating conflict known as the Ruin, there exists a tranquil community in North America where emotions and colors have been deliberately eradicated to prevent conflicts. Additionally, the citizens have had their memories erased. Our story follows a young individual named Jonas, who is riding his bike alongside his two closest companions, Asher and Fiona. It's the day prior to their ceremony, during which their roles within the community will be assigned. This impending event makes Jonas quite anxious. The trio decides to visit the nurturing center, where newborns are cared for, and Jonas's father happens to work there. To their surprise, they come across a baby who is crying, and father reveals that the child's name is Gabriel, although such information is not meant to be disclosed. Father admits that he whispers the baby's name to comfort him. Fiona, possessing a natural talent with children, manages to soothe the baby's distress. During dinner at home, Jonas sits with his father, mother, and younger sister Lily. They engage in a conversation where they cautiously express their daily experiences, mindful of using precise language as certain emotions like fear or love are strictly prohibited. Jonas must use the courage to inquire if his parents ever felt anxious before being assigned to their current roles, fearing that there might be nothing significant awaiting them. His father assures him that the elders have been observing Jonas closely since he was an infant, ensuring they know exactly where he belongs. The following day arrives with great anticipation as the ceremony commences. The chief elder, unable to be physically present, appears as a hologram and recounts the historical events that led to the establishment of their community. She then proceeds to assign the children their designated positions. As the ceremony unfolds, Jonas notices an elderly man casting a meaningful gaze in his direction. Asher is assigned the role of a drone pilot, but when it comes to Jonas's turn, he is unexpectedly overlooked while the other kids receive their assignments. Fiona is designated to work in the nurturing center. Finally, the chief elder singles out Jonas, proclaiming that he possesses all four vital qualities, intelligence, integrity, courage, and the ability to see beyond, which convinced the elders to select him as the new receiver of memories. The entire gathering erupts into jubilant chants of Jonas's name. Jonas embarks on his private training under the guidance of the elderly man known as the Giver, who holds the responsibility of transmitting memories to the receiver. The Giver possesses a wealth of memories that even the elders, with all their knowledge, cannot recall from before the ruin. Taking hold of Jonas's wrists, the Giver transports him into a vivid memory of a wintry forest, where Jonas experiences the exhilaration of riding a sled down a hill. He witnesses his own excitement and senses the emotions tied to the memory before arriving at a cabin. Meanwhile, Gabe, a baby, is brought to Jonas's home by a nurse from the nurturing center. The infant continues to cry, and Jonas and his family are temporarily entrusted with looking after him until he catches up with the other children. Lily, Jonas's younger sister, adores the baby and wishes for him to sleep in her room. As Jonas gazes at Gabe, he feels an unspoken connection and begins to believe that one day, just as he was chosen, Gabe might also be selected for something significant. In the subsequent training session with the giver, Jonas is presented with a memory of being on a boat. The intensity of the experience allows him to perceive colors emerging around both himself and the giver. The giver explains to Jonas that colors, along with emotions, have the potential to create conflicts and problems if everyone were to experience them. He inquires whether Jonas agrees that maintaining sameness is necessary. While Jonas acknowledges his agreement, he also finds the newfound sight of colors incredibly beautiful. Later, Jonas reunites with Fiona and Asher. Asher shares his exciting experiences of piloting drones near an area called Elsewhere, which he describes as predominantly consisting of farms and rocks, with two rocks almost touching. In an attempt to demonstrate what he has been learning, Jonas suggests they use trays to slide down a slope. They engage in this playful activity, laughing and having fun. However, when Jonas extends a helping hand to assist Fiona, they are abruptly interrupted by a voice reminding them that physical contact with individuals outside their designated family unit is prohibited. The giver has a meeting with the chief elder to discuss his training with Jonas. The chief elder cautions him not to repeat the tragic mistake that occurred with the previous receiver, strongly suggesting that she took her own life. 
In Jonas's next session with the giver, they engage in playing music on the piano and sharing a joyful memory of a lively party where people dance and revel in the moment. Jonas is taken aback when he sees a memory of himself and Fiona running towards a tree and sharing an intense and passionate kiss. Unexpectedly, the chief elder contacts Jonas at his home, seeking information about the training he has been undergoing. Aware that he has been repeatedly instructed not to disclose his training, Jonas tells the chief elder that he simply sits with the giver, without engaging in much conversation, and then returns home. During the subsequent session, Jonas is confronted with horrific memories that deeply disturb him. He witnesses the heart-wrenching scene of an elephant being ruthlessly shot down and also finds himself in the position of a soldier whose comrade is tragically killed in action. The overwhelming impact of these images weighs heavily on Jonas. Later, he discovers that the previous receiver, a young woman named Rosemary, was also deeply affected by the distressing memories she experienced. In another memory, Jonas sees the giver playing the piano alongside Rosemary, who sings alongside him. Additionally, Jonas witnesses a projection of his own father and a nurse in the nurturing center attending to two babies. The nurse selects one of the infants while Jonas's father is left with a baby deemed too weak. In a shocking turn of events, Jonas's father administers an injection into the baby's head, causing its death. The lifeless body is then placed in a box, which is subsequently sent into a furnace. Jonas is horrified by this revelation, realizing that what they euphemistically refer to as releasing into elsewhere is actually a process of killing and disposing of individuals. In their next encounter, Jonas suggests to Fiona that she should stop taking the morning injections, which numb everyone's emotions. He then takes her to a familiar spot called the Triangle, a place they used to enjoy with Asher. It is there that Jonas and Fiona share their first kiss, marking a significant moment between them. Upon returning home, Jonas learns from his father that Gabe is scheduled for release the following day. Filled with determination, Jonas decides to take matters into his own hands. Breaking curfew, he ventures out in search of Gabe. Asher discovers Jonas and confronts him, leading to a physical altercation where Jonas delivers a punch to Asher's face. Undeterred, Jonas proceeds to the nurturing center, where Fiona assists him in rescuing Gabe. Together, they create a diversion that allows Jonas to escape with Gabe unnoticed. Riding on a motorcycle, Jonas makes a daring escape, but not before sharing one last kiss with Fiona. Although the elders continue to monitor Jonas closely, he manages to evade their surveillance once he reaches the outskirts of the community. Aware of Jonas' escape, the chief elder sends Asher on a drone to locate him and Gabe. However, instead of apprehending them, the chief elder orders Asher to deliberately lose track of Jonas. Asher finds his friend running across the desert and maneuvers the drone to lift Jonas up with a beam. In a heartfelt plea, Jonas implores Asher to listen to him, urging him to question the actions and intentions of the elders. Finally, Asher yields and sets Jonas and Gabe free by dropping them into a nearby river, granting them a chance at a new life beyond the confines of the community. The elders gather to watch video footage capturing Fiona's involvement in Jonas and Gabe's escape, including their kiss. These images perplex and confuse the elders, leading them to condemn Fiona for aiding Jonas. Fiona is summoned to the chamber where Father stands prepared to carry out her release into elsewhere. The Giver, Chief Elder, and others are present as witnesses. In a bold moment, the Giver mentions his own daughter, Rosemary, and openly declares his love for her, disregarding the elder's aversion to such emotions. Just as Father is about to administer the injection to Fiona, a remarkable event takes place. Jonas, with Gabe still in his arms, rides a sled beyond the borders of elsewhere, triggering a powerful reaction. Suddenly, all the memories that had been kept hidden from the community, along with the return of color, flood back into their lives. A wave of emotion sweeps over everyone, and both Fiona and Mother are moved to tears.
wish I had been there. With Gabe still in his care, Jonas continues his journey through the snowy woods, guided by his own memories. He senses the presence of distant singing, though it may be nothing more than an echo. Regardless, Jonas acknowledges that it is the giver who has led him and Gabe to this point, accepting the profound influence the giver has had on their lives. And the movie ended. What do you think of the recap? Please drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future movie recaps and other exciting content. Your support is invaluable in allowing us to create more high-quality videos. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.